you set about to raise a lot of money for a worthy cause, how would you do it? Do you think you'd hold a big fair? Well, that's what Philadelphia did in 1864, the Great Western Fair, or Sanitary Fair as it's called, to raise money for the Union War effort. I'm Robert Hicks, director of the Mütter Museum and Historical Medical Library of the College of Physicians of Philadelphia. And welcome to another episode of Broken Bodies, Suffering Spirits, Injury, Death, and Healing in Civil War Philadelphia. The United States Sanitary Commission is a lot like today's Red Cross. It started as a civilian effort to bring relief to soldiers on the battlefield, and it became a really nationwide effort to collect supplies and money to sustain the soldiers while they were fighting, but also to provide medical relief for them in hospitals and camps. They began to organize these fairs in 1863, the women at the regional branches. Um, which were wildly successful ways of not only getting people, um, you know, rescuing morale when it started to fall, um, getting people refocused on the war aims, um, but also in raising large amounts of money. I am standing in a corner of Logan Square in Philadelphia, and ahead of me is a major busy parkway, and it leads in that direction to the Philadelphia Museum of Art. But in 1864, this was a huge park, and a very important event took place here, the Great Central Fair of the U.S. Sanitary Commission. Now, the Sanitary Commission itself was founded in 1861, largely by the efforts of women, and although the organization was headed by men, women were its main driver. Purpose? To aid Union soldiers and sailors who were ill or injured, wounded in battle. Now, the Sanitary Commission received authority to work with the War Department to go into the field alongside the troops and the military hospitals to provide comfort, which was usually material comfort, ranging from medicines to blankets and food for the ill and injured. Now, the purpose of the fair here was to raise funds, and the Sanitary Commission held several fairs in the North and West during the war. But the big one here in 1864 covered all of this area. There were temporary pavilions, some buildings with the vastness of a cathedral to display flags. There was a museum to display artworks. George Washington's carriage was even on display. President Lincoln showed up to give a speech and to help raise funds for the effort. And when he got here, he found this place so packed he could barely move between the buildings. He had just been nominated for a second term. In three weeks in June 1864, the fair came and went, but it raised over $1 million in 1864 money, hugely beneficial to the war effort. Uh, the, the Sanitary Commission women did a lot of the organizing, and what we see was that many of the, the white women that, who d have done a lot of the writing and the middle class, upper class women wanted to volunteer their time. And again, this was a very important part of their role, was volunteering. But there were other women who did get paid to nurse. Some of the volunteers saw that as below them. I'm not one of those contract nurses. But yet other women who nursed, and some of them may have been on these sanitary commission ships, they were in, at the, in other hospitals, they, they had been destitute, made destitute. Their husbands and sons had been killed, so they had to, they had to work. of color are also, um, as are, you know, uh, white women who are sort of um, taken by this opportunity, if you will, to find, you know, more avenues for their work are, take, are taken by the similar sort of sense that this is a moment for them to prove that they're capable of doing work for their nation and, and doing work outside of their homes. Women of color are also going to start their own organizations that are going to parallel uh, white women's organizations. Here in Philadelphia we have a Colored Women's Sanitary Commission, we have a Ladies Sanitary Association which are associated with the black churches here in Philadelphia. Um, and these organizations interestingly um, begin to raise money and supplies even before um, Pennsylvania or even Massachusetts are accepting black soldiers. 
So they're in, in, in anticipation of there being black soldiers and, and, right, and, and you know, injured black soldiers or ill black soldiers, these societies uh, begin to, um, to collect supplies and begin to set their organizational structure, structures together. The United States Sanitary Commission was the largest and most influential organization for the relief of the troops. But there were also grassroots, smaller local organizations that contributed to the effort. We're standing near the location of one of them that was known locally as Browns. Now we are in Philadelphia near the Delaware River waterfront. And behind me you can see the Ben Franklin Bridge. On the other side of the river is Camden, New Jersey. So this was a real convergence point. So troops coming from all different locations and states. And the way they'd work it was this. Troop train would send a telegram ahead that we're coming. And when the telegram was received, people would come out and fire a small cannon that was captured from the Mexican War. That would alert all the women in the neighborhood, come and start cooking. This would go on all hours of the day and night. But when the troops showed up, what did they find? Well, they could get ham, beef, bread and butter, sweet and white potatoes. They could get cake and pie, if available, and pickles, and lots and lots of coffee and tea. But there was more than that, because the troops could even wash themselves here. They were even given free stationery and stamps to write the folks at home. So by the end of the war, thousands of troops had been through here, and all that activity and the cannon going off made this place known as Fort Brown. <laughs> 